All right, so let's keep cooking here. So what we're gonna do next is start to set up some bones for a neck, skull, and jaw here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new object, which is a child, which is gonna be a 2D object, and it is a bone. So when we create a bone, let's make sure we're on our translate tool, and we can see we have this little yellow square gizmo that allows us to move it around. If we click on the handle here, we can rotate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this. This is gonna be the bone for our hips. So we're gonna build up with the hips as the kind of root of our spine. And so we're gonna label this as hips. And then we're going to add another bone. Now, if I add a bone with the bone selected, it's gonna become a child and it's gonna be assigned, we'll call this spine one. It's gonna be assigned to the child slot of the bone 2D script, which is added to the new game object, right? So these are now linked together. If we grab this and move it, we can see that the children follow the parent, right? So let's go ahead and do spine one. That's what we're gonna bind the chest to. And then we'll go ahead and create another bone, which is going to be the neck bone. And we'll call this neck. And get rid of this random slash here that I accidentally typed. Now, okay. So let's take this and we'll move it down a little bit. And maybe kind of over there. We don't need to be too precise about this because we can adjust. But what we're gonna do next is we're going to connect up the skull and the jaw to the neck bone. So we're gonna create another bone. And this is going to be our skull. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it by clicking up here and we're gonna drag it over. Let's kind of line it up with his brow line there. And next, we're gonna create another bone for the jaw, but it's not gonna be a child of the skull, right? It's gonna branch off from the neck here because we want them to move independently. So we're gonna select the neck game object and then we're gonna to go to bone, 2D object, bone. And I got made over here for some reason, and we're gonna pull it down. Now you can see, because we now have two, this one is getting rendered with this uh, little transparent gizmo there. So now we can see, whoop, we have this hierarchy of bones that are gonna to move together. We can move individual bones individually. If we move one of the parents, it's gonna move the children, right? So this is a good start. But as you can see, the sprite meshes are not reacting to the movement of the bones, right? So that is the next step. We wanna create a binding between the bone and the sprite mesh. So let me just label the jawbone here. And then what we're gonna do is let's start by binding, let's bind spine one to the chest. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select spine one and we're going to go to window, anima 2D, sprite mesh editor. Now, importantly, you need to do this with the object in the hierarchy selected. I got a little confused when I was learning this. I was trying to do it from the project view. You need to select the instance in the hierarchy and then open the sprite mesh editor window. And actually I made a mistake here. I selected the bone. What we actually wanna select is the sprite mesh. So we're gonna select the sprite mesh, right? I'm selecting the chest sprite mesh object. And we can see that it's now hi highlighted here in the sprite mesh editor. Now this sprite mesh editor looks very much like the regular sprite editor, but it's got some additional functionality. So what we can do here is, first of all, we can adjust manually if we choose the vertices of the outline of our sprite mesh, right? We can also uh, shift click to add points, right? Or we can double click to change the mesh tessellation. Um, so this is useful as the bones start to stretch and deform, you may find that you need more detail in your mesh in terms of triangles. So you can do that just by double clicking, which is pretty cool. Another option is that we can do it automatically. If we go to slice, 
we can just go ahead and choose the amount of detail that we want in the outline. I'm going to set this relatively low because it's kind of a big blocky object. And then how much tessellation we want in the mesh and then hit apply. And then we get a really nice automated outline and mesh generated for us there. So that looks like a great start. I am going to apply those changes and now in the hierarchy, I'm going to assign a bone to this. So I'm going to assign spine one to the sprite mesh instance set bones field. Right now, this is going to assign all of these bones that are children. In some cases, that might be helpful. In this case, that's actually not what we want. So what I'm going to do is select the jawbone and then just hit the minus sign here twice. So we need once to clear the reference and another to clear the uh, slot. So now we have just the spine and we can see here in the sprite mesh editor that this has been assigned. Now we're going to switch over to the bind view and we can see an overlay of how this bone is affecting the mesh, right? So in this case, we have one bone assigned to one mesh, so it's controlling it completely, right? We can also see this pies view, which we'll look at and will be more useful when we have multiple bones affecting a single mesh. So in this case, this is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And what we'll see when we do that is if we look at the sprite mesh asset, uh, let's see, it's not showing it in the preview, but basically this will now have a reference to the bone uh, baked into it. And so the, now let's just do a quick test. If we move spine one, yeah, we can see that the bone and the uh, mesh now have a relationship with each other. And as we move the bone, the mesh will move as well. So we're gonna do the same process for the skull and the jaw. So let's go ahead and select the skull sprite mesh, drag in a reference, to the skull bone, open the sprite mesh editor, and let's see, we want the, okay, just need to reselect there. Okay, we can see the bone displayed here, and what we wanna do is, I'm not gonna worry about the shape in this case, because it's just gonna be moving it up and down, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bind and apply. And we're going to do the same process for the jaw. We're going to assign the jaw bone and bind and apply. Okay, so now woo, we can rotate the root bone, right? We can move just the head. Uh, rawr, and we are off to a great start, right? We can move the, the well, we don't want to rotate it. We just want to rip. I just want to grab it, rawr, 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 rawr. make angry noises. Um, we can have a lot of fun with that. So now we've got our sprite meshes created. We've got bones assigned to them and we're off to a great start. The next step is going to be that we are going to rig up an arm so we can look at how it's going to look when we have a single bone or two bones affecting a single sprite mesh. So we're going to look at spreading the influence of bones across a single sprite mesh.